Hi everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about Docker Compose so make sure you're watching the video till the end. So in the beginning there was a tool called as Fig. Fig was very nice, a very powerful tool. It was created by a company called as Orchid and it was uh, one of the best ways to manage multi-container Docker applications of them. It was a Python tool that sat on top of Docker and you know it let you define your entire multi-container application in a single yaml file and then you could make use of uh, you know, simple fig command line tools to deploy and manage the life cycle of your application and behind the scene fig would you know, read the yaml file talk to your docker engine using docker api and get these uh, applications whatever it needs to do like volumes networks and building images basically talk to docker api and got things done and it was a very nice tool it was gaining a lot of popularity in fact it was so good that docker inc acquired the company Orchid itself and they rebranded this tool Fig as Docker Compose. That's a little history around Docker Compose and um, now for the Fig command line tool was renamed as Docker-Compose and it continued to be an external tool which got bolted on top of Docker Engine for a very very long time. So how do we define? What do you do? So basically what you do is you know, take your entire microservices and define them. How your image needs to be built. To build your image, what do you need? You need a context. In that context, you keep all the files what is needed for building that image and also your Docker file, of course. So instead of me writing that Docker build commands, I specify, hey, listen, this is the context. You need to go look at this and build the image for yourself. Once the image is built, what does it need to do? It needs to spin out and run those containers. How to run? There are 100 run options, what to specify, what to name your container, what restart policy to make use of, what volume to make use of. You will define everything in this Compose file. How you want your application to look like is what this Compose file is going to contain. And all you need to do is run simple Docker Compose up command and it starts and deploys and runs the entire application with that. Creates network for you, creates the volumes for you, builds those images for you and runs and connects your containers to the network for you. That's your Docker Compose. Let's go take a look at it. The most common use cases is Docker Compose works on a standalone Docker host. Standalone. If you are running as Docker Swarm, it's the orchestration tool. Or if you're looking at deploying this application in the Kubernetes world, it's a different format there. Compose works only in the standalone Docker host. If you're running Docker Swarm for orchestration, there's some other tool we make use of called as Docker Stack. Compose works on a standalone Docker host, typically used for setting up your development environments, uh, automating your testing environments where you, know, you have some automated tests to run. You want to deploy that whole application environment using simple commands like Docker Compose up. The application comes up, you run your automated tests, you say Docker Compose down, clean up what you have done and get out of there. Or if you're running single host deployments, which we usually don't in productions because it's going to act as a single point of failure for us, don't, but assuming you're still running single host deployments, that is where you usually make use of this tool called as Docker Compose. All right, let's understand the Compose file format. How does the file format look? For that, where am I going to take you? Is I'm going to take you, let's go to hub.docker.com. I'm going to search for one example here. There are plenty of examples I will show you. Let's look at one of them. Ghost, an example, is a free and open source blogging platform. And this is an image, and if you scroll down a little bit, uh, it gives me the Docker Compose file as well. YAML is the format it makes use of. YAML usually, I'm sure you kind of guys already might have been exposed to YAML. YAML, as in yet another uh, markup language, in markup language, it uses Python kind of uh, nesting to indicate your uh, indentation to indicate your nesting, and you know, it's case sensitive. There are no opening closing tags few basic syntax if you know that it's pretty straightforward stuff like english stuff where you give little white spaces for maintaining indentation and stuff around that so here is the compose file i'm going to make use of the same compose file and we'll try to understand what this compose file is made up of i have this file copied here let me open this file there are four top level resources when it comes to the compose file and the top at the root of your of the composed file, you have a key called as version. Till previous versions, this key was mandatory and it used to be always the first line at the root of the file. This defined which version of Docker Compose file format 
you are using. Normally, you should use the latest version. Compose has evolved over the time. Different versions, they've introduced some few keywords. They removed few keywords. That's where it told your Docker which version you're making use of. Now, this has been duplicated. By default, it makes use of the latest version. And if you're still referring to some older Docker file, then you need to mention this as version at the root at the top of your key, top, top of your Docker Compose file. Then second top level resource, what you have is services. This is where you define different application microservices. In this example, we are defining two different services, a ghost front end and a MySQL DB, right? And Compose will deploy each of these services as its own container. This is exactly similar to how you would run your container command. For example, let me quickly open a duplicate session or oh, let me bring on a notepad. If you look at it, it's exactly similar to something like this. Docker container run. And then what? Hyphen hyphen name. Ghost block. Then hyphen hyphen restart equals to always that's your restart policy. And if in small p, 80 on my host and the application listening at 2368. And some hyphen hyphen e and v or hyphen e as the environment variable. Some key and some value. Multiple of them. Then hyphen v. Volume, you want a volume, this is the name of your volume. And where is the mount path? Wherever you wanted it to be mounted. And then in the end, you made use of the image name. Here, the ghost is the name of the image. And Alpine is the tag of that. This is how you would deploy this application service. You have taken the same Docker com container run command and you have converted into the Compose format. Now you see the indentation under services. There are two child properties, ghost and MySQL. Under ghost, everything that application, again, you have this indentation of two white spaces and that defines everything under your ghost service, how this application should look and behave. Similarly, for MySQL, again, the same story. This container, otherwise, I would have defined as Docker container run, hyphen hyphen name, hyphen hyphen restart, hyphen hyphen env, whatever it needed to run, I would run that. Instead of writing long Docker commands like this, in the declarative format, we have defined how it should look like. So whatever is defined under your service, Compose will deploy each of these services as its own container. And now I also told you, it will build the image for you as well. Instead of writing the image name, you could have just told build and you could have given the context of where that folder is, it should need to look at. So when you mention that way, it looks at Docker file is present in that context, and it's going to build the image and make use of the same image to create this container as well. Here, I'm pulling this image from Docker Hub, but I will also show you examples of how to build it as well. Then, the third top level key, what you have is volumes. So if you want to define multiple different volumes and make use of different drivers or any other things, what you want to with the help of volumes, you, you can create volumes. Of course, I've not given any options here, meaning it makes use of a default local driver, what we have to spin out that particular volumes. But if you had some other custom requirements and parameters to that, like drivers and options, you could make use of as well. Then the fourth top level key is networks. When I don't mention those networks, what happens is it anyway creates the network with the name of the project as name of the folder where you are and makes use of the default driver that is the bridge. But if you had some other use case, you, know, you did not want the default network driver and you wanted to specify something else, well, you could have specified all of them. Name of the network, the driver, if you want to make use of, for example, you want to make use of IPv LAN, not the default something else. Whatever you define under networks, a network would be created making use of what you have defined, the, all the options what you can define out there. And then the volumes will be created, then these images will be built, and containers would be deployed. That is how your Compose file looks like. I'm showing you just a simple uh, example of Docker file, which has just has two different services in it. Let me quickly save this. All I need to do is Docker Compose. Then what do we usually do? We ask for help. It tells you a different story. By default, it says, hey, I'm going to look for the Docker Compose as a file name in whichever folder you are. You want to specify a different folder you can just do hyphen f and you need to define a name for the project default i'm going to take the name of the directory where you are and if you want to specify a different name you can by a couple of options again you get different options out there to run the docker compose for example 
simple command like docker compose up that's all i got to do and hyphen d to get them in the background in detached mode and it's going to get these images for you so what happened really is uh, the images were pulled the networks were created the volumes were created for you the containers were created and started all you had to do is just run one simple command and everything was taken care for you i know i just showed you a simple example of two microservices if you had 10 15 of them like the way i started off it would have been more easier well that's how we do it and it gives you some options like you can say docker compose show me some logs it'll show you logs of all the containers involved as part of this project or you can do docker compose ps it kind of shows you what all uh, services are running what our containers are running as part of this or com commands like docker uh, ls or docker images right and then uh, what else docker compose you can stop and start individual services you can look at the logs you can look at the top command docker compose top shows you all running pro basically it helps you in managing uh, and deploying and running the life cycle of all of these containers out there right that is your docker compose in the nutshell and a single command simple command like docker compose down it's going to clean things up for you it's going to get rid of those containers clean up those networks void created and take care of it so guys this was our expert from team k21 academy and if in case you want to have a deeper dive and want to build a career in Kubernetes and Docker, including DevOps, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on mastering Kubernetes, Docker, and DevOps that includes how to build in demand skills and land a higher paying job. So, for that, you just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash k8s02. You have to click on book your free seat now. And after that, select an event state according to your availability, enter your name your email address, your phone number and click on yes save my seat. Moving ahead you'll be seeing this kind of interface. You just have to save this link on the extreme right, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class. Till then take care and keep learning.